Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna learn how to upload high quality images when you're writing your case studies on Medium, right? I've seen a lot of people who don't know how to upload high quality images because they don't understand the concept of screen sizes and resolutions. And as a result, all the images that they put on their case study are pixelated, you can't zoom, low quality, and it's such a big mess. So today I'm gonna to clarify every single thing that you need to know about this. Uh, we're gonna get into a little bit of technical stuff in the beginning where I talk about screen sizes and resolutions. And then I'm gonna show you how to actually take a screen and mock it up nicely, create a nice image out of it that you can export and put on medium. Now, before I get started, make sure to check out my mega product design course for beginners. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you haven't done already. Okay. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay. So what I have here is a frame of a windows uh, screen size. So what that is, it's 1920 by 1080. That is the regular standard format of a Windows laptop. Yes, you have bigger laptops, you have smaller laptops, but this is usually sort of like the standard one that you see. And uh, if you come here to Google, I found this uh, website, which has a list of these things. And as you can see, yes, you have smaller ones as well, uh, but I'm gonna be using this one, which is 1920 by 1080. 90% of the people who have laptops are gonna have this laptop, uh, unless you have like a super high-end gaming laptop or a Surface Pro, um, this is gonna be sort of your standard one. Even you might have 1600 by 900 um, as well. As you can see, this is full HD uh, and then it has 1080p as well and then 16 inch, right? So this is the screen resolution of a Windows laptop, okay? So that's why I've set this to 1920 by 1080 and we have an image over here and the original size of this image is 600 by 800. This is the original size of the image. I haven't shrunk it, I haven't expanded it. This is the original size of the image. All right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how this works on a MacBook. I've taken a screenshot from a MacBook uh, of the display section and let's understand what we have here. Now what you can do in a lot of laptops is you can change the resolution to match your needs, right? So this is the default, uh, this is actually the default one. And this is another one where the content becomes a little bit scaled up, right? So as you can see, the resolution here is 1280 by 800, all right? And then when you see over here, it is 1440 by 900, right? This is the default one, 1440 by 900. And uh, the one that's bigger than that is 1280 by 800, right? So now if I were to go and take this, all right? And I'm just gonna move this over to the side and I'm gonna delete this image and I'm gonna change this to, uh, I'm gonna say MacBook. I'm just gonna say MacBook one. And I'm gonna make this 1280 by 800, all right? And then if I come over here, I'm gonna make this MacBook 2, which is 1440 by, uh, if I look at this, this is 1440 by 900, right? So 1440 by 900, right? So uh, it's the same MacBook, but I have the ability to customize it the way I want uh, so that the scaling factor is proper for me, right? So let's just confirm this is 1280 by 800, 1280 by 800, okay. Now, uh, as you can see over here, uh, if I just remove everything and bring these down, you can see that uh, the MacBook one and the MacBook two are smaller compared to the Windows. But the truth is that it's not, okay? The MacBook one and MacBook two are way bigger than the Windows, right? I know it sounds confusing. Let me explain what that means. So here, if I go to Apple's website, it's the MacBook 13 inch uh, website. And here it says that the resolution is 2560 by 1600, right? Now that is really weird because here in Figma, we saw something else, right? So if we go and choose 2560 by 1600, okay, let's create a frame in Figma. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say uh, 2560 by 1600, okay? And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this the true resolution, okay? You can see how huge it is. It's way bigger than the Windows laptop that we saw over here, right? Now, the other interesting thing for you to note is that if I come over here, okay, and I make sure, and I'm gonna go ahead and lock this, and I'm going to divide this by two, that is very surprisingly going to give me the exact same size as the MacBook one, which is 1280 by 800, and this is also 1280 by 800. So what's happening here is that the MacBooks are scaling and behaving this way because they have a retina display, right? And Windows laptops, typically don't have retina displays, but there are monitors that have retina displays. There are gaming laptops that have retina display. 
But because of this concept of retina displays, MacBooks are smaller in size, but have higher the resolutions, right? This is something that is so critical and fundamental for you to understand as a designer, because these are very important technical things that you need to know. You can't be a designer without this. It's super, super, super important. These are like the basic foundational principles that you need to know when it comes to the technical aspect of interfaces, right? So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scale this back. Okay, 2560 by 1600. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to double this one. All right. So 1440 into 900. I'm going to go ahead and double this up. Okay. Right. The thing is, both of these are the same, but it's just that depending on uh, the scale factor that I'm choosing, I'm going to choose this one in the scale because this is what I have set as default. All right. Uh, I'm going to move this above uh, over here. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over all these. We don't need all of this. I'm just going to keep it just in case. And then I'm going to come over here and bring it over here. I'm going to say MacBook. Okay. Now, here is the interesting thing. Since this image is 1600 by 800 on a Windows display, if I copy this and I paste it over here, you can see how small that image actually is. It's really small right? It looks huge on this display, but it actually looks really small on this display. So ideally what MacBooks do or, or devices with retina displays, what they do is they're going to scale this by a factor of two, just like everything that we did over here. I'm going to scale this by two. So I'm going to say into two, and I'm going to bring this over to the center, right? Now you can see that the image is bigger. This is what MacBooks are going to do. But the problem here is if I zoom in, I don't know if you can actually see this, but things are getting very pixelated, right? It's getting pixelated quite a bit. If I come over here and see it, it's rather little crystal clear. But the moment I see here, it's very pixelated, like the mud and all of that. I, I, I hope you guys can see it, right? It's getting really pixelated. And the reason is because this image is being destroyed because we are unnecessarily scaling it, right? Now, to explain that even further, right? If I make a duplicate of this and I scale this even further, right? It's going to pixelate like crazy as you can see over here, right? Because the pixels are getting stretched. You have only a few pixels, right? And what that's going to do is when I look at an image on a MacBook, it's going to be severely pixelated because the original size is not 1200. The original size is 600, right? So, when you are creating images for your case studies on Medium, it's super critical that the image that you see on a MacBook is going to be very crystal clear. So that's how things work between retina and non-retina displays. Okay, so now let's take an actual example. Okay, so now what I have here is a mock-up of an iPhone 13, and I also have a screen which was built for the iPhone 13 frame, so it's 390 by 844, that's the iPhone 13. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the wrong way of doing it first before showing you the right way. The thing is, we want to take this screen and put it inside the mock-up. Now, as you can see, this is not an image. All of these are individual actual, you know, vector layers, right? So, what I've seen a lot of people do is, the thing is, we need this to be an image layer so that we can put that over here, right? So, what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this and I'm going to come down and in the object panel, I'm going to choose an option that says rasterize selection. Okay. And I'm going to click on that. And what that's going to do is that's going to convert it into an image. Now, as you can see over here, things have already started to pixelate, right? Because 390 is a very, very small resolution. It's really small. Okay. And now the moment you put this Okay, I'm just going to copy that and then paste it over here. You can see that it's already pixelating over here, right? So what you ideally need to do is scale this up. So what does that mean? I'm going to delete this. I'm going to um, select this one that we have, move it over to the side. I'm going to make a duplicate of that, okay? And I'm going to come here to the plugins and I'm going to choose a plugin called as scale. I'm going to run that, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on percentage and I'm going to set that to 300%. So it's basically three times the size. I'm going to click on resize. And once it does that, it's going to go ahead and resize it by three times. Okay. And then I'm going to, obviously you can see that this is quite huge. And then we'll come over here, go to object and I'm going to choose a rasterize selection. Okay. And now I'm going to select this. Okay. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to come here and paste it over here. Okay. Let me do that again. I'm going to create a fill and then 
uh, I'm going to paste. By the way, if you want to copy, just hold down um, Control Alt C on Windows or Option Command C on Mac, and then Option Command V or Control Alt V paste. Okay, so now if you come here and see the difference, let me see if I can uh, put the difference, all right? You can see that there's such a big difference in the resolution. This looks super crisp and this is completely pixelated, right? This is super crisp and this is completely pixelated. So that means that you ideally have to scale this by 2x or 3x. I would obviously choose a higher number like 3x. You can also scale it by 200%. And then copy that and paste it into a frame like this. Okay. So now I'm going to go with this one where this looks super crisp and super high resolution, right? Because what's happening here is that the, the pixels are getting squished into a smaller screen size, which is fine. But when you scale from a smaller screen size to a larger screen size, that's where you get the problem. Okay, now let's see what sizes should your frame be that you're going to export, right? So you go, you're going to export an image and you have a bunch of mockups here, right? What should be the size of this? Now for that, I'm going to show you something very interesting on Medium. I found this random article and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this image. And when I click on this image, you can see that it's, it, it pretty much takes up the entire space, which is very nice, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, right click and uh, oops, let me just close this. Let me just close this up. Right click and choose copy image. I'm going to come back here to Figma and then paste it over here. Okay. Now, if you see here, the size of this is for 1400 by 830. This was the, this is the original size. So in a Mac, in a MacBook, this would ideally become this. Okay. This is how it would be on a MacBook. It could double the size. Okay. And as you can see, it's fine, right? It's not that pixelated. It's a little tiny bit pixelated, but that's okay. It's not a big problem. And here on the smaller one, it looks very crisp. I'm going to come here and look, take a look at another image uh, over here, which I saw. Okay. Now, if I click on this, you can see that the image scaled, but it didn't scale all the way to the, you know, the top and bottom corner, right? Unlike this one, right? If you come over here and see this one, this went to the edge. It went all the way to the edge. But why isn't this image going to the edge? to the edge, right? Why isn't this going? So let's understand. I'm going to right click and choose copy image. And then I'm come over here and I'm going to paste. Okay. Now, as you can see, this image is significantly smaller. Okay. And this is thousand by 667. So if we go ahead and double this up, okay, go ahead and double this up, you get 2000 by 1334. So what's actually happening is that if I take my MacBook screen size that I have over here, right? Which is, uh, you know, 1280 by 800. Okay. And I take this image and put it inside the scaled version. Okay. You can see that it's taking up almost the entire space of the MacBook, almost the entire space. Okay. And if you take this one, right, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to delete this and then bring this image over here. You can see that it can't expand more than that because it can scale only to a factor of two. Okay, so which means you have all of this unnecessary gap. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go come over here and I'm going to take a screenshot of this entire thing on my laptop. Okay, I'm going to come here and paste it. And I'm going to go ahead and scale this up by a factor of two. Okay, so now if you see over here, if I overlap these things, okay, you can see that this is exactly what's happening on Medium. This is what I did on Figma. And this is the image that you're seeing on Medium, right? It's pretty much the exact same thing. So I'm going to just take this and uh, just probably put it over here, over to the back, right? You can see that the image is being scaled exactly like how it is on medium. That's how retina displays work. So what does that mean? That means that when people look at your designs on medium, when they look at your images on medium, it needs to be on the face. It needs to be really huge, right? Which means you need to see how would it look on a MacBook, right? Which means it needs to be as big as this, which means the resolution here has to be quite high, 2,800, right? Now, the height doesn't really matter in this case, right? You can have whatever height you want, but the width really has to be a very high number. I'm going to show you an example of one of my projects, um, and uh, let me see if I can find a good image, right? This image over here, okay? So if I come over here, you can see that this goes edge to edge, and all of these things are so pixel perfect, right? It looks so crisp to the eye. And if you actually want to see what the size is, so I'm going to copy this. Okay. 
I'm going to come back to Figma and then paste it over here. You can see that the original size of this was 1400, which is pretty much the same width as uh, this image that we saw over here, right? And uh, obviously it's bigger than this image, right? So what I would recommend is to have a base width of 1440 pixels. But I know what you're thinking, right? We need it to be as big as this. So how do we do it? So the way this is going to work is what you want to do is uh, select this image. Okay, let's say we make this 1440. Okay, or let's say we make it 1400. Okay. And uh, I'm going to make the height probably like 800. Doesn't really matter what the height is. Okay, I'm going to apply this same blue color. I'm going to take this mock-up and throw it in. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down. So you can press K on your keyboard to get the scale tool. You can come over here and you can go ahead and shrink this down. Okay, um, and then I'm going to put a couple of things over here. I'm going to auto layout this, put it in the center and then add like a quick drop shadow. Effects, drop shadow, maybe 20 and then bump this up to like 60 uh, and then drop the opacity to like 16, right? This is what you want to do ideally, okay? And then what you want to do is when you're exporting this image, you want to select the image, come down here to export and you want to choose PNG. Now you obviously have multiple options, but I've seen that PNG holds a little bit more quality than JPG. So obviously select PNG. And I'm going to select the export factor to be two, which means I am designing at one X, but exporting at two X, okay? And I'm going to obviously export it. And when I export, what basically is going to happen is I would get an image that would be as big as this, right? So I go to percentage, set it to 200 and then resize, right? Um, and then obviously this would be rasterized. Um, so yeah, this is how the image that I export is going to be. Now, if I zoom in over here, you can see that the um, images are quite crisp, but there's a little bit of pixelation. It's a tiny little bit of pixelation and that's okay. It's fine if it's a little bit pixelated. And now what you want to do once you export it is you go ahead and uh, you add in an image. So you add the image. Okay. I added the image over here. Uh, now, obviously this is really small because medium is squishing it. I am not squishing it. Even though the resolution of this is quite high, it's squishing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to go to publish this and see if I can unlist this, right? Let me see if I can unlist it. So uh, manage unlisted settings. Is this make the story unlisted? I'm going to say yes. Will be only those with the link. Okay. I'm going to click on save. Um, and uh, all right. And then choose publish, right? And now this is going to say publish to uh, my this thing. Obviously, I don't want to send an email. And then I'll click on publish. Okay. Uh, okay. So maybe I need to quickly add some things. Just going to say test. And then click on publish. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to say publish now. All right, publishing story. And now you can see uh, it in high resolution. Now, what you want to do is when you click on it, right? And as you can see, it's just in your face. It's so beautiful to look at. Now, sometimes things might look pixelated, but give it a few seconds. Medium is going to take time to actually render the high quality version because it saves multiple versions of the file to increase load times, right? So give it a few seconds and just wait. And then it's going to turn from low resolution to high resolution. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.